In this video, we'll look at the Logosoft Comfort Diagram Editor toolbar and go through all the functions that it offers. Even if you've been using Logosoft Comfort for some time, it's worth a quick refresh. I discovered I'd forgotten or wasn't using many of the features. First on the list is the selection tool with the shortcut Escape. With it, you can select a block, you can select connections, you can move blocks, you can move connections, either rerouting them or re-terminating them. Select multiple blocks with the marquee select. These can be moved. And finally, double click to set parameters on a block, such as its name or timing parameter. Next on the list is the connect tool, shortcut key F5. It allows you to connect outputs to inputs. This is in effect your logic wiring tool. Next on the list is the cut join tool. This allows you to break connections between blocks. Uh, very convenient when got blocks on different pages or the connections are getting a little bit untidy. So we can do the same thing by right clicking on the connection line and we can rejoin if required. There's also the go to partner link there. So if we do lose our place, we can select, right click, go to partner. Next on the list is the insert comments command. We can click there, type in some text, OK that. If we go back to our select tool or press escape, we can resize this using the handles. But first we'd need to turn on wrap text. And now we can move this around to suit. You can also select the font, uh, the color. You've got other colors and you can select from the wide palette there. So we've selected a blue. OK that and that has been applied. We can drag the text around and move it over components if so required. When we select two or more blocks on the diagram, the alignment tools become available to us. So selecting these two, we can do a vertical alignment, which will pull the first into line with this, the last could select a row of components and do a horizontal alignment. Again, the first lines up with the last. We can adjust the spacing to give more uniform and pleasing results. So we, we could select all of these, do a horizontal spacing, set that to 60. OK that. And all the blocks get spread out evenly and we could apply the same on the vertical. Set that to 50 is fine. We generally don't see it, but there's a, a Z order on the screen where components are stacked front to back on the diagram. So if we, for example, move input two over input one, we can now send input two to the back or we can bring it to the front. This has some uses in just trying to determine or make it clear whether a component is in front or behind. Other places it might be useful is if you had an arrangement like this where you wanted a denser display. I want them in descending order this way. So I'll send this to the back send this to the back, send this to the back. So they're neatly stacked on top of each other now. Undo and redo behave as you'd expect. Blocks are available from the instructions tree over here, but there's also a graphical selection here where we can go for constants, inputs, cursor keys, function keys, etc. We can go to general functions, which is all your standard logic, ands and or gates, 
and the edge triggered variants of those. We can go for special functions. And finally, there's the data log profile, which only has one block in that group. The window split function allows us to select one view, a double view, or a, a triple view. Double view is handy, it gives a reasonable amount of space, and we can select another program to drop into that view and compare and copy elements from one to the other. What isn't so obvious is that it also supports duplication of the same view. So by using control drag, I can drag a copy of that view into the other window. If we zoom in, we should recognize that it's the same program name there. But we can zoom out and get an overview of the program while looking at the detail on the left pane. The zoom functions work as you'd expect, but there are mouse shortcuts for it. So you can scroll up and down. Control scroll will zoom in and out and shift scroll will pan left and right. The select lines button, control M, allows us to select a block and highlight the connections here in green. Selecting input two shows us that we've got a connection to block one, but also going to block three and it highlights the other connection for that. That can be useful in helping to find our way through a program. It also allows us to highlight just the connection and show that one wire. If you find that you are, have overlapping wires and you can't select the other one, I'm multi-clicking here, the one option is to use the Z order buttons and send that one to the back. And now you can reselect and you'll select the other wire. The page layout button allows us to set as many pages as we require for our diagram. Here I've set to three pages. And if we zoom out, we can now see our diagram is just up in the top of page one. It's a good idea when your diagram spans multiple pages that you separate the long joins between various function blocks rather than have them run across the page breaks. In function block diagram mode, this button, convert to ladder, will convert to ladder. In ladder diagram mode, the button will convert back to function block diagram. Note that when this happens, we've lost some of our tidy diagram that was not stored with the ladder. So the we've got crossing connections and a general tidy up is required. So use this with care. If you're doing anything complicated, make sure you have a decent backup of your program. And here you can see we have to untangle a few things to get back to our original state. The simulation button will start a simulation of our program. This is one of the very useful features of the logo. And we can also simulate the logo's display. When connected to a logo basic module, the online test button allows us to monitor variables and status of the PLC. Many of the analog function blocks can take or feed reference values to other analog function blocks. These can be illustrated on the diagram by turning on the reference lines and they're showing up here. And two other buttons then allow us to see what exactly is happening here. The expand all parameter boxes will show us that AX on block one is fed into both the on and off threshold on block two and the output of the calculation of that is fed in to the pulse width modulation timer on block three. So you can collapse the, the boxes for uh, easy view and you can turn off the reference lines. I hope you found that useful and I encourage you to learn the shortcut keys. It speeds up program writing and development. Mm -hmm.